Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining Painting with Picasso's Grapevine. My name is Leanna Hahn, and I'll be your teacher and um, your host for today. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about trees. So, there's lots of different ways to draw a tree. There's lots of different ways to paint a tree, and there's lots of different trees. So, today we're gonna show you just a couple examples of different trees and different techniques. Now, I'm actually gonna use black and white because I do enjoy the tone-on-tone -tone approach. Um, one of the, the first things really to draw to your attention is the form of the tree. Look at the detail, really focus on it. So this particular tree does get broader at the base as most trees do. And right now this looks like it's a very large tree so we don't get too tight up at the top. But very specifically, draw your attention to the branches. Look to see where that highlight and where that shadow is. And if you recall, I use very oftenly, I refer to the flashlight effect. So decide, if I were shining a flashlight on this painting, where would the light fall and where would the shadows fall? Kind of decide that before you start your painting so you know where to put your highlights and your depth. So if we kind of use that approach and we, we shined a, a shot light on this painting, we would see the light kind of coming right here at the middle at the top. We've got light on top of the branches, but we've got depth right here, and the depth shows shadow, and it shows depth as well. Then we have down at the base here, we've got a lot of darking items, and this is showing all the, the different variations and um, texture of the, of the tree. Now, I've brought a couple other trees just to give you a couple more examples. Again, when you're looking at trees, remember that trees don't grow straight. So you look at this tree, and there's a lot of movement, there's lots of bumps, there's lots of texture in the base of the tree. As well, focus on your branches. So look at the branches. The branches here are very knobby. They start out large, they move down, and they get slimmer as they get farther out. A lot of people, when they start doing their trees, they start very straight, and they have a very um, even thickness, and which is really not the way nature is. So starting those branches off thicker, moving down thinner, is going to give you much more realistic effect. So for today, we're just going to be using the two colors. We have our white and our black. Again, this is acrylic paint. And I bought a different array of paint brushes. I think with this particular tree, we're going to be using some of our tight our tight square brushes. Um, we're also going to be using some of our smaller square brushes. We're going to get that effect as we go left and right and make the streaks. Um, we'll add a, bit, a little bit of detail, so we're going to use a very tiny brush. But again, you use the brushes that are, you are comfortable with. Of course, we have our water today and our dab rag. And just a reminder, the dab rag is there as we wash out our paintbrush. Make very certain that you don't put too much water onto your, uh, leave it onto your brush because if you place it back on the canvas after you've done all this work, it'll drip down and that, that water will strip off your paint. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the, I'm gonna start with the broad brush just to get some, some base color on the background. Always starting with a little bit of water just to moisten it up. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix and kind of create a little bit of a gray. And as you can see, black goes a long way, so you don't wanna to put too much black. I'm just kind of mixing it in. And I'm gonna just start with the background. Now, my goal here today is not to complete a finish, an entire painting. It's just really to focus in on the trees. So I'm just giving the canvas a little bit of a start working in some of that gray paint. And we're gonna focus exclusively on the tree. Now I'm doing my strokes up and down. You don't have to do that. If you wanna go left and right, that's fine as well. Just getting a little bit. And you'll notice I just went to my water because I'm going to kind of thin out the paint a bit. That helps sometimes with spreading. Water is a very good medium for acrylic. But again, caution, be very careful. Make sure you don't leave any on your paint, on your canvas, because it will strip off the paint. All right. So, got just a little bit of a background. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by making the form of our tree. And I'm gonna use that with, do that with rather the 
the square brush. Kind of like a medium size, nice and tight. I tend to use that as a pencil and use that for drawing. So I'm going to start with the a little bit darker shade of gray. Not necessarily black. You could do black, but I'm going to start with a little bit darker shade. And let's look at our tree before we start. Fingers are a fabulous way to measure. So we're kind of looking at this tree and gosh, that's about almost the width of my hand and it's coming all the way down. So that's about what our background is. I'm going to start on the top here. Now you could start from the bottom, you could start from the top, whichever way you feel comfortable. So I'm just kind of sketching out, hey, where is my tree starting? And it looks like we got a little bit of a branch up here. And kind of moving that down. So you'll notice when you have branches, again, you don't want to make them straight out. They're always going to be deeper at the base where they, they grow from the tree. So make sure that your branches are drawn that way. And don't worry about getting the sides of the trees very straight because quite frankly, again, trees are very bumpy. They don't have a lot of straight edges. So we're kind of doing a little bit of a curve and bringing that out. Kind of wobbly, not worrying about a very straight line. And if I were to continue my tree down here, the bottom base would continue to go down and I'm going to now arc up the side of that branch. Making it thinner as it approaches it, it gets farther away from the tree. So continuing on down and make it kind of wiggly because again those trees they're not straight. So as we're getting closer to our base here we're about a little bit more than a handful from the bottom and that's where we're going to start to arc out. So again, just kind of using that as my, my guiding line. So if we look back at our original here, we've got um, probably two fingers down from the first branch so we're going to add the second branch. So we'll start that somewhere around here. Again, kind of making an oval movement out. And I kind of carry the eye line down and I'll continue the bottom of the tree here, very wobbly. And continuing to move that, the bottom of the base, make that nice outward arc. Now, what I'm gonna do back here is I'm gonna go back in and finish the base of that branch. I'm going to continue to carry this out, making it wobbly. And this is going to go right off the canvas. Coming in from the bottom, again, making it thicker as it is closer to the tree. You know, and kind of create some interest. Have it move upwards. We're going to let that go right off the tree. So now we've got our base. Again, we've got very inconsistent lines. We've made the, where the trunk meets the branches, we've made them much more thicker. That'll give you a much more realistic effect. So now we're gonna go in and we're gonna create some gradient scales and really start laying in the base of um, where the depth is and where the highlight is in this particular tree. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my black. And my black now just has a hair of white, just a dot kind of mixed in there. So we're going to go in and start using these quick stroke motions, again using the very same brush we worked with, and bringing in the sides. We're deciding that our light is going to be right down the middle, so to show the light down the middle, we need to show the darkness around the edge. So you continue this movement all the way down. These are very quick, short strokes. You'll notice I keep on adding more paint to my paintbrush just to get it to blend very nicely.
And that's one of the reasons why I started with the base. I started with that gray base on the background because it allows me the option of coming on top of it, creating layers and building up, which is a very common technique when you're painting with acrylics. So I'm gonna go back up again and do the same thing on the opposite side. Kind of continuing all the way down, just those quick, tiny little strokes. Now you'll notice too, in this particular painting, there's a lot of looseness in the background. This particular tree is intended to be in the foreground, therefore it is the most, or has the most detail to it. We're not, again, we're not gonna complete the whole painting here because that would take quite a while, but just kind of giving you a description on, you know, what is the difference? When do you put in a lot of detail? People get hung up quite often and they feel that they have to put a lot of detail in those trees in the background. Of course, you're going for whatever effect you feel comfortable with, but the eye will complete the picture. As long as you put lines that reference or hint to the trees in the background, your eye will go, okay, yeah, there's trees in the background, and your eye will complete the picture. Now you'll see a lot of paintings that have a lot of detail in the background. Again, your choice. But for ease of, of completion, you don't have to. So you notice we've got some nice black lines going on each side. So I'm gonna start dragging these in just a little bit more, kind of completing that, that complete shadow. Because again, remember, this is a round tree. So what emphasizes the, the round form and shape is really the sides being darker and the top, the forward, the closest portion being the lightest. Now, the next step is to layer in one more shade of gray. Now, I still have black on my paintbrush. I'm gonna mix some of that with the white and get to a medium, a medium shade of gray. Using that same brush, I'm gonna come in now and start creating some strokes that go back and forth. Now, you want this to be fairly streaky meaning you don't, want it very, you don't want it heavily blended. You want to be able to see that difference. And so I'm kind of just creating that middle shade. And what I'm doing right now is I'm really preparing it for the last shade, which is going to be our lightest and will be closer to white. Now, as you go through here, you're going to you're going to find yourself blending into the size of the of the black. That's okay. You may find that you want to come in afterwards and then add some more black on top of it. That's fine as well. Now, I'm going to go back up and start just kind of grabbing a couple spots, increasing the blend and just making it a little bit more wispy. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and wash out my brush. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white. And the key on adding the final portion of white is really to make sure you don't blend this in. This is gonna be just your one stroke, one, two strokes and done. Kind of deciding where you want that light to land. If you need to grab more white, you're gonna find you do that a lot because it will start blending. I 
and just placing that on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and redefine the outside of the tree because we've done a lot of work inside so I'm sure your, your form is a little loose. Kind of going back over some of that black area. If your gray has gone perhaps too far out then this is a good time to come back in. At this point I'm going to go ahead and fill in one of the branches here. Just laying down some black. Now what I'll do is I will come back and add some white highlight on top of it and I'm going to re-emphasize the black underneath. So I'm kind of redefining the outside of the tree and grabbing a little bit more of that black and just dragging it in. Going back on this side of the tree and doing the same. Now remember not to redefine and make it too straight. You don't want to lose that nice looseness, the natural form of the tree. And you'll notice as well, I'm making my drags just a little bit curved to reemphasize the fact that it is a round tree. So I'm bringing them just a little bit curved, a little bit art. Going back in underneath that branch, making sure we have darkness there. And finishing the same on this side. Now the effect for the branches is pretty much the same all the way down. So I'll do a little bit right here. We're going to grab some gray. Go ahead and move that out. If you're finding that your paint does not spread very well, go ahead, grab some water. That will, again, is a very nice medium that will help you get your paint to really cover the palette. You'll notice that there's some dimpling. And dimpling is where the white, pal the white uh, canvas is actually showing through. You want to get that covered. And that's usually an indication that you need to add a little bit more paint or you need to add a little bit more water. Now, I'm going through and making sure that as I emphasize this branch, I'm making the darkest portions on the bottom because that's where I've decided my shadow is going to be. I'm carrying that out. And you can add a hair of gray and start emphasizing the lighter aspect of the, of the branch. Go ahead and carry that all the way out. Now we don't have a lot of small little twigs coming off our trees, but that's okay. You can add some or not. This tree can be whatever form you like. And that's what I like about landscapes. They're really quite forgiving. My tree can look like, or your tree rather, doesn't have to look like my tree, but it still looks like a tree because they're all unique and different. Now I'm going back here and adding some, some white to now create that, that highlight effect. And it doesn't have to be all the way through. It can be touched in some areas. Now our original, I'm going to move over to our very tiny brush. Our original has a lot of emphasis on the shadows on the top here. So we're going to go through and we are going to emphasize that shadow because that's showing you that it is dipping down and it's a darker area. Again, it kind of helps to show the, the three-dimensional. Now you can go ahead and re-outline the branch if you like. You don't have to. You can just take that through with your nice brush. Outlining becomes a lot easier when you add water to your, to your paint. So in this case, <clears throat> don't take your paintbrush directly from the water to your palette. Go ahead and add the water to your paint on your paper plate here. Liquid, uh, get it very liquid at that point and then take it to your canvas because 
you'll have a better chance of creating those nice tiny lines without dropping or dripping any water down your paint. So you've got some nice effects right there. Now you'll also notice that in the original, we've added some more of those streaks that are coming up across the branch, just for some depth. So we're kind of bringing it in. Oops. And you're gonna notice, I got a little bit of water on there. Grab your rag in time before it starts dripping down. So you can save that. And then I'm just kind of going over it. Again, creating some more of that, that depth underneath, dragging it up. So a lot of the effects that we've kind of done here on the top will continue all the way down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to the bottom here and kind of show you how to really create some emphasis and some depth to show the different variations on that particular tree. Now, we've got some nice some nice veins, some nice roots coming in here. So I'm gonna grab my black paintbrush and I'm gonna go ahead and start deciding where I'm gonna place those. They're gonna be thinner as it goes towards the top and thicker as it gets towards the bottom of the tree. Make sure that your, the tops of your lines do not stop evenly across. You want some to run higher than others and others to start lower so it, again kind of creates that depth and variation I'm just using the side of my brush again using that as my pencil if you will and again adding some of them coming up higher some of them lower All right, so that's kind of decided where my veins are going to go or where my roots are going to start and where they're going to end. So the rest of this really is going to be very loose as well. We're going to go back to our gray, and we're going to go with a darker gray, and we're going to start just kind of loosely filling this in. You'll notice I've got some dimpling showing through and that's okay for right now. I'm going in between the veins and doing kind of a left-right movement with my paintbrush. Continuing all the way down here, filling it in. So we've got just a general pattern. I'm not really filling in every little inch, every little aspect. Now I'm going to go back to my, my black and kind of carry that down. And we're going to grab a little bit of black, come in on top of this. Again, this whole bottom area is very loose. And lastly, I'm going to grab some white. And in this case, I'm going to start moving some, some of my paintbrush up and down. Carrying that up the tree. Don't make it a solid line. Let it be loose. There are points where the light is showing through stronger than others. You need to decide where those are at. And then don't forget, take a step back. Take a look at the painting. How does it look? Where do I need to emphasize more? Perhaps I need to add a little bit more depth coming out from the side. Go ahead and do that. Using your, your side brush again, I love that for drawing techniques. If you've gone over something that you need to reemphasize, now's the time to do it. All right, now we've got a tree. Now this particular, last particular branch, it's the same, same technique as this one, so we're not gonna spend time finishing that one. But what we've done is we've given you some basics, some pointers, 
some suggestions and some tips on how to create a tree, how to create that oval shape, how to create those nice thick branches, the movement of the branches, and then the base of the tree as well. I hope you found that very helpful. If you have any questions on how to do these paintings or like to get information, do send us an email to info at picassosgrapevine.com. Thank you again.